Well, good morning, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to be joined by our Prime Minister. I want to acknowledge uh, some people who are on the screen with us that, that are not with us uh, in person. You might recognize uh, Bonnie Crombie from Mississauga, uh, Mayor Esvalli Liplant, Montreal, Mayor Horvath, very nice to see you. We haven't had a chance to chat since you got elected. Congratulations on your election in Hamilton. Glad you could join us this morning. Uh, that's John Tory there in the middle. Is that, is that, is that yes, that is? that's John Tory from uh, Ontario. Uh, <laughs> Ken Sim, nice to see you. The new mayor of Vancouver, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Mayor uh, Esbelil of Gatineau, who was with us yesterday, and I know was working on budget and other things today. And Catherine Fournier, who I think is a little under the weather and not speaking so well, but we're very happy that you could uh, uh, join us here this morning. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, uh, you know, you can tell the Prime Minister is here when all the media and the security, it's like when Danny Breen goes to Walmart in St. John's, if any of you have uh, uh, experienced, uh, experienced that. I want to acknowledge that we're um, the Algonquin uh, Anishinaabe people, uh, and we're in their traditional land. They're the custodians of the uh, unceded land upon which we're gathered. We deeply appreciate the historic connection. And as I mentioned yesterday, we had a very good session, the Prime Minister, with... Uh, Elder Claude Commander on Sunday, which Mark Miller joined us for, which we were very appreciative. To begin our meeting, I'm going to ask uh, Mayor Plant uh, if she would just set a context for this uh, uh, significant and horrific day in the history of Canada. Mayor Plant. And, and women and men and boys. So thank you. And uh, I'll pass it back to you, Mike. Thank you very much. We also acknowledge the uh, horrific circumstances in uh, what's happening in Manitoba and uh, Winnipeg. <clears throat> I know that Mayor Gillingham, uh, every time I've seen him in the last couple of days, he's been on the phone getting updates. So uh, our hearts and thoughts are with all the people who are being affected by that tragedy as well. I also, since I have the chair, want to acknowledge one other significant event that happened on December the 6th in our history, and that was the Halifax explosion. In 18 years of public life, I've never been away from Halifax on December the 6th. I'm away to be with my friends and my Prime Minister and to talk about these issues, but on that day, uh, 105 years ago, 2,000 people were killed, uh, almost 10,000 were injured, 1,000 made blind by the Halifax explosion. Uh, and to put it in context, there's one woman, uh, uh, Jeannie Hinch, who woke up on the morning of December the 6th in Halifax with 10 children, her husband, uh, five brothers and sisters, her mother and many friends. And when she next went to bed, all 10 of her children were killed on that day. Her husband was killed. Three of her four siblings were killed and her mother was killed. And uh, it's an amazing story of resilience for the city of Halifax. She was found a day later under the rubble. And it turned out that she was pregnant with a son, Hubert, who was born on April the 18th. So we take that as a sign of the resilience and the spirit of Halifax. Um, but I. I I would like to be with my, my uh, folks in Halifax today, but I'm happy to be here. Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining us. We're uh, always delighted to see you, and you do make a lot of time for this caucus and for FCM. It's uh, great to see you in person. Um, you see some of the mayors that we have virtually and those who are with us around the table, and we're happy to have the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, I want to acknowledge right up uh, front the adaptation strategy that your government brought out that was awaited for by many, and FCM in particular is delighted that $530 million was dedicated to the Green Municipal Fund. It shows a recognition by the government that cities can do things, and it's also a recognition that, you know, directly supporting municipal projects uh, is important to the government. And I know that the hard work of Carol and her staff uh, has helped with that. 
On behalf of the Big City Mayor's Caucus, I want to thank you um, for the ongoing partnership with Canadian cities. Working together, we've made great progress for Canadians over the years. As I indicated, we were pleased to see the recent commitment in the FCM Municipal Fund and the DMAF, the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund. We met yesterday with Minister LeBlanc, Minister Hussein, and Minister LeBlanc has indicated that they see this as a down payment on the important work that has to be done. But these kind of tools go a long way to helping cities and communities of all sizes across our country uh, in the biggest national challenges that we have, certainly from climate change to an issue that is on the minds of everybody around this table, which is Canada's housing and homelessness crisis. I want to thank you for your ongoing commitment to work with Canada's mayors, to regularly participate in our meetings, to collaborate on our shared priorities and discuss how we can continue to work together to deliver for Canadians. Today we're looking forward to talking with you about how we can work together to build stronger, more resilient, more inclusive, and more affordable communities for Canadians through your upcoming budget. That includes scaling up frontline solutions to homelessness, to the broader housing crisis. It means boosting local climate resilience and scaling up pathways to reach net zero emissions goals. It means ensuring continued growth and the modernization of public transit to support our economy and help Canada get to these climate goals. So all of us here are ready to roll up our sleeves and to talk about how we move forward together on these shared priorities and discuss how we can strengthen the roots of our federal municipal partnership. So Prime Minister, I'll turn the floor to you for opening comments and then we will have a number of uh, questions with the time that we have. Thank you very much. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you all for welcoming me uh, once again. Uh, this is an annual meeting for us uh, on top of all the opportunities we have to discuss when I come to uh, visit you guys uh, across the country and we talk about your uh, specific uh, engagements. But one of the things that we've seen time and time again is that uh, citizens want to see their orders of government working together and this is an opportunity for us to gather in a significant way. Uh, it's great to see all the big city mayors uh, as well as Tanin, Carol and other, uh, uh, others uh, from the FCM. Since we met in October last year, many new mayors have joined the BCMC. I'm happy that you're here for this important conversation. Congratulations. Dans les derniers mois et les dernières années, on vit une crise après l'autre. La pandémie, l'invasion de la Russie en Ukraine qui accentue l'inflation, le climat qui change et qui cause des tempêtes, des inondations et des feux de forêt. Merci pour votre leadership, pour tout ce que vous faites pour être là pour les Canadiens pendant ces moments difficiles. Since 2015, it's been a priority for our government to work in partnership with municipalities. We've delivered on infrastructure, on public transit, on childcare, uh, but that work must continue. I look forward to discussing many of your needs and challenges so we can find solutions together. Uh, mais aujourd'hui, uh, comme uh, Valérie uh, l'a mentionné, on peut pas passer, uh, je peux pas passer en tant que Montréalais uh, sans mentionner le 6 décembre. Uh, une date, uh, j'étais au secondaire quand ça s'est passé uh, à quelques coins de rue uh, de l'école polytechnique et je m'en souviens encore et toujours et de prendre un moment pour se souvenir que la violence contre les femmes euh, continue et même avec la pandémie euh, on a vu une augmentation <coughs> dans euh, les violences dans les stress dans les, euh, la santé mentale euh, auxquelles les gens euh, font face euh, et ça amène de, plus de violence dans nos communautés euh, entre autres euh, je serai ce soir avec Valérie euh, à Montréal euh, pour euh, commémorer ces euh, 14 euh, jeunes femmes euh, qui euh, auraient été euh, des ingénieurs euh, extraordinaires euh, en, plein, en pleine carrière euh, ici 30, 30 ans plus tard euh, et on regrette ça mais on se souvient euh, de cette tragédie pour, pour continuer d'agir euh, pour euh, pour garder nos communautés de plus en plus en sécurité. Um, thank you, Mike, for highlighting uh, what's going on in Winnipeg as well. Scott, we're thinking of the, um, the fear and the devastation, the continued violence, particularly against Indigenous uh, women and girls that continues not just in, in Winnipeg, but right across the country, uh, where together we've taken significant steps uh, to invest, to support, 
uh, to look at the kinds of broad approach that is necessary with so many different facets to end the cycle of, of violence uh, for good. Uh, but there's lots more work to do, and on days like this, we need to remember that. Um, we're also, uh, as uh, you all know, uh, continuing to move forward uh, with significant measures to keep our communities safe, whether it's investing massively uh, to strengthen uh, our border measures uh, against guns coming in illegal from the United States, uh, but also moving forward with a national freeze on handguns. Um, we're also moving forward on banning uh, assault-style weapons. Uh, we banned them a couple of years ago. Uh, we're continuing to make sure that we get that list right. We are not going after uh, rifles and shotguns uh, used uh, by hunters and others uh, in, uh, in a law-abiding way, but we are against going against those guns that are designed uh, to kill the largest number of people in the smallest amount of time. Uh, those guns have no place in our communities across the country, and the federal government will continue uh, to be strong on that as we, uh, as we move forward. Um, public safety is just part of what we're working on closely with all of you. We know on housing, everyone should have a safe and affordable place to call home, uh, including and especially the most vulnerable. Uh, we've launched the third round of the Na Rapid Housing Initiative, which means thousands of new affordable units across the country. Uh, we're moving forward with the Housing Accelerating uh, Accelerator Fund, uh, which directly supports all of you in being able to increase uh, housing supply, uh, particularly through density me measures, but also through new constructions. Uh, we're going to continue, uh, continue to do that and work constructively with you. That's $4 million over the Housing Accelerator Fund. Uh, we're also moving forward, uh, as you mentioned, Mike, on adaptation and climate mitigation. Uh, we need to build new homes and infrastructure that can handle the more extreme weather events of the coming uh, decades that we know is going to happen at the same time as uh, we respond to uh, the growing population, the growing opportunities. Uh, that means being smart and anchored in science, uh, in where we build, in how we build, uh, and it means extra costs that we will be there to support with as uh, we build strong, resilient communities. Um, last time I was in Newfoundland was to visit not, uh, not, not Danny, but, uh, uh, but Port of Basque, uh, where uh, the devastation there from Hurricane Fiona, is, as was felt across Atlantic Canada, requires us to uh, step up on, uh, on uh, responding to climate change. We've uh, uh, invested over $500 million to uh, support uh, F FCM's Green Municipal Fund, uh, which we know is uh, a key part of recognizing the front lines. Uh, of the fight against climate change for many Canadians, which is in our cities and municipalities, and we're glad, glad to be there for that. Sur l'infrastructure, on va continuer uh, de faire des investissements sans précédent dans les infrastructures. On va continuer d'être un part partenaire avec du financement fiable en ce qui concerne les bâtiments publics, l'infrastructure verte et le transport en commun. Uh, you know, it was in working with all of you and in response to all of you that we've created a permanent stream for public, uh, public transit uh, that we know uh, is needed by all of you to be able to plan uh, for the years ahead uh, because you know, transit isn't funded from one year to the next. When you're building big capital projects, uh, it is uh, a plan that stretches out over decades and knowing that the federal part, uh, government will be there as a reliable partner uh, into the coming years is, uh, is a big uh, uh, element that will help you with all your planning. I know um, you know well that the federal government uh, has been there as a very active and present partner uh, from 2015 onwards. Uh, it is something that matters to me. It's something that uh, requires us to be present. Um, I know at the same time uh, there are pressures that municipalities are facing uh, where uh, provinces uh, are, some of them stepping up, some of them not stepping up as much as they should. Uh, the federal government will be there as a partner, uh, but uh, it remains really important to make sure that all three orders of government are fully at the table. The federal government cannot be stepping in to places where the, where the provinces uh, should be uh, funding and supporting uh, their cities. Uh, that's not how the Constitution works in this country, and uh, as a Quebecer, I'm very sensitive to that. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we will continue uh, 
uh, to be partners in a whole bunch of big ways, but we need to make sure that everyone's at the table. Uh, je suis très content uh, d'être avec vous aujourd'hui. J'ai bien hâte de prendre vos questions, alors uh, je vais laisser mes commentaires sur ça ce matin. Thank you all.